This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. We're just going to go through and look at a very small accounting standard and an accounting standard that an entity that prepares its financial statements under IFRS will only ever use once. Okay, and it's the accounting standard that dictates the rules about when you move from your local accounting rules over to your IFRSs and what you should do to prepare your very first set of IFRS financial statements. And no surprise, it's governed by IFRS 1. Okay, uh, because if you're going to adopt IFRSs, then surely it's the first IFRS that you should use to be able to go through and get guidance on how to convert from your local gap to your IFRSs. So what you've got there is if you are preparing IFRSs for the very first time as your financial statements, then you need to make a, a, a disclosure within the accounts that that is what you are doing so that the user of the accounts clearly know that you are no longer preparing them under the old rules that you previously did. Okay. However, when you are then preparing your IFRS financial statements for the first time, there are three things that you need to go through and do. First of all, you need to go through there and look at your current year financial statements. Okay, so you need to prepare this year's figures using the IFRS rules. However, you then have an issue there, don't you, with your comparatives. So the comparatives, if things need to be comparable, don't they? We need to have comparability as one of the enhancing qualitative characteristics. So in order for comparability to ensue, we need to make sure that not just this year, but last year's financial statements are also prepared under IFRS. So that will go through and mean that you need to go back to the start of the previous financial year and adjust your opening balances there to be under IFRS. So effectively, that there's three reporting periods, isn't there, that you need to adjust for this year's, last year's, and in order to get last year's opening balances, you're going to have to restate the previous years as well, aren't we? OK, to ensure that everything, if you like, is under IFRS. So it's a really complex, long winded technical challenge, isn't it? Uh, it will take a lot to do. But thankfully, you only have to do it once because then once you've got everything under IFRS, you then just carry on under IFRS in the following year. Again, to aid comparability and also understandability, what you're going to have to do as well is with your current year profit, you're going to have to go through there and do a reconciliation of your current year profit under IFRS to what you would have had under your local accounting rules. OK, uh, so a separate disclosure within the notes to the accounts that shows you what you go through and would have had compared to what you now have. And what I'm going to do, again, you're not likely to have to go through and do any of that. I'm just going to go through and, and show you a disclosure note. I think it's from British Airways' financial statements. And it's British Airways' financial statements for the year ended 2006, which is when they moved from UK reporting rules over to international reporting rules. And what you can see here is the disclosure notes. Uh, the disclosure note that reconciles the profit on the UK rules to that on the international. So what you can see there is that you have your UK gap on the left and IFRS is there on the right. And then the important column that you have there is that one in the middle that, that makes the adjustments. Now, I'm not going to talk about why those adjustments have arisen. So if you like the differences between UK gap and what you have on the IFRS, if you're studying under the UK paper, which you won't be able to do for too much longer, everything is going to move to IFRS ultimately, uh, that you may have an awareness of what those adjustments relate to. What I want to identify and point out to you is that it shows where the changes have been made. So if you look at, at the first figures there, you're talking about your revenue. And, you know, we would have had 7813 but our revenue is much lower under IFRSs so when they've gone through and adopted IFRSs which would have been IS18 at the time that was in place not IFRS15 that is currently in place the revenue reduced by there was at 41 million pounds okay uh, presumably 
due to some revenue recognition and under UK rules you're allowed maybe to recognise revenue that little bit earlier than what we were under IFRS's. So it's not a pretty picture that your revenue is much lower. However, I think that is then more than compensated for, isn't it? When you look at your expenditure on your operations, the expenditure on operations under IFRS was much lower. OK, and that compensated for the reduction in the revenue, didn't it? OK, so your operating profit, you can see there was 540 under UK rules, but under IFRS, it was there as 556. OK, uh, again, other adjustments that then followed uh, that then made the profit before tax of 415. A much higher profit before tax of 513 under your IFRSs. OK, uh, so there's some big adjustments there to do with profits or losses on sale of fixed assets and investments so maybe that might be related to something to do with maybe IFRS 5 uh, and your discontinued operations and non-current assets help so that I'm just purely speculating uh, but but that may have accounted for, for some form of, of difference there mightn't it uh, and then what you can see right at the very bottom is that there was an adjustment in terms of tax which then meant that our profit after tax on the UK was much lower than what you had under IFRS's uh, so therefore, I think that's probably due to IF or IAS 12, something maybe to do with deferred tax and recognition of deferred tax assets and liabilities or under IFRS maybe being slightly different to what you had on the UK rules way back in 2006. Uh, but the key bit there is that you can see that our profits under IFRS are much higher. OK, is that 100 and nearly 130 odd million higher? Uh, under IFRS and UK GAAP. The, the key bit is that the cash in the business hasn't changed. The same cash came in, the same cash came out. Uh, so why do we look at things from a profit perspective? It, you know, surely cash is much more important, but that's an argument for, for another date, isn't it? Uh, if we're focusing on profits, which is what users of the accounts tend to do, we need to show them that the profits are bigger, not because the company has performed any better. Uh, the reason why the accounting profits have changed is because we are adopting a new set of rules and it's important to identify that and show the use of the accounts where those changes have arisen so that they then can understand what will then happen into the future. So it's an accounting standard that you just need to have an awareness of. Uh, there may be a small question on it within the exam. If it were to crop up, I could really only see it being worth four or five marks. And of those four or five marks, I would have thought three of them would be understanding what you need to do to convert your UK or your local accounts into your IFRSs. So look at the current year under IFRS, restate the prior year under IFRS, and then do the reconciliation of your profits that you have identified there. You're not going to have to do the reconciliation. You're only going to have to talk about IFRS 1 as a standard and its application. Don't forget as well to include a specific statement that states that this is the first year that you are adopting IFRS. So you may be lucky at some point in your career to, to utilise IFRS 1 in, in your day-to-day -day job. However, if your business where you work has already moved over to IFRSs, then this will have been done several years ago. So it may be worth finding the financial statement and looking at the year in which it was done and going back and having a look at what the company that you work at actually did when it moved over to IFRSs. Other than that, that's it. Nothing too much to add to your ever-expanding knowledge. So I'll see you all within the next session.